renovating the country right now. Um, have you reached out to the police up there? Or the well, you know, or? Uh, Tracy Plowk has uh, made it clear that if there's any resources needed, you know, we'll provide them. It's an unbelievable story. Um, you know, of course, we're willing to do anything we can to help, but you know, I think it appears now that they want to give these ladies some space. But I think, you know, as I've, I've read, um, you know, the mental health issue is going to be a big one, and um, anything we can do on the on the mental health front, of course, we're willing to do. And um, so, the good news is they were lost and now they're found. Uh, but they'll, of course, be a struggle now for for them and. You know, you look at a, it's just an amazing story. You look at Elizabeth Smart, who was held for a short period of time and appears to have gotten most of her life back. I mean, who knows? But at the end of the day, if there's things we can do, of course, we'll do it. Okay? Governor, you, you specifically asked these people to tell their stories. I mean, is that the game plan here to get the Medicaid? Well, I don't have any game plan. I just think that... Uh, you know, when people who make decisions on issues like this understand the personal stories, I think it's helpful. I mean, but I don't—I ha didn't come here with a game. I don't have any game plan in my pocket at all. I mean, I just think to be able to continue to let people know that um, you know, there but by the grace of God go I um, is important, and I just think. Uh, particularly for the providers to be able to carry on a conversation. No one's lost in this. It's just a matter of uh, whether you can, you can click and turn on the light somehow. And, you know, we just keep working on this thing, and we'll see. Governor, do you think that your uh, fellow politicians here care about the fact that the mental health folks out there may not get the services they need because they seem to be digging in their heels on it? Well, look, I mean, the one positive thing that we've seen out of the house is that they put 500 million dollars into you know for hospitals and and for uh, mental health services and addiction services um, I, I think that, that that represents the fact that they understand there's an issue a problem uh, I just think there's a there's a better way to uh, to address it with with more resources so on one hand, you can say we, we didn't get everything we wanted, of course, but on the other hand, maybe we're making some progress on raising issues that, uh, uh, that affect people who do live in the shadows. Um, so just keep at it. Do you think you have any better understanding because it's touched your family in the past? No, no. Well, you know, look, whether it's in a job like I have, you know, not just, you know, being a, a person that lives in a family, but also to be, you know, in television, to be in the media, um, I get around, so to speak, you know, and I hear stories all the time. I mean, if you just take these women who have been have gained their freedom, it it doesn't take uh, it doesn't take anybody who have been in that house to understand the kind of uh, of, of the I want to say it right the the kind of challenges that they have going forward. Um, but, you know, I've never been on food stamps and I've never lived in a car, uh, but I know people who have. And so, you know, sometimes when, you, when things affect you personally, uh, you get a better insight, but at the end of the day, things don't have to affect you personally in order to realize that we have an obligation to make sure that the poor and the disadvantaged and the addicted and the mentally ill that they need help. And um, I, one of the things that we committed to when we released people from the institutions back in the, the 1970s uh, is that we were going to rebuild the, the safety net, particularly for the mentally ill. And, um, you know, we haven't done it. Resources haven't been there. So this gives us an opportunity to do just that, to rebuild, to, to live up to the promises that the state of Ohio and the legislature made and people around the country made, that we don't want to contain them in an institution. They ought to be community-based, but we have to provide the resources to help them. So this allows us to live up to the commitment. The other thing is, when it comes to the drugs and drug addiction, you know, when I was young, people who used heroin you saw in a movie. 
now they're people that live in your neighborhood. I mean, the stories of middle class moms and dads having to cope with, an, with a heroin addiction of their sons and their daughters is, it's breathtaking. Um, Worthington Christian, where my kids go to school, they, they had a program up there on, on addiction and you know, a young man who went to Worthington Christian, as best I understood it, he died from an overdose. I mean, these are not people you see in a movie. These are people that that go to school with you. These are these are moms and dads who work with you. The, the drug we have a drug crisis. I call it a it is a drug war. And some people say, well, if you can't win the whole war, why engage in the battle? We just legalize it or whatever. That's nonsense to me. But you have to treat it. And you can beat these things, but they're real. I don't even understand what an addiction would be like. Um, but we know they're there. And I know some really good people who get up every morning and hope that their, their child's going to survive, going to live, going to overcome this addiction. So we can't ignore those people. But we also have to realize that in our state, we're doing so much better. I mean, we, we know about this, the, the, you know, our CEO survey where Ohio now is viewed, uh, gone from 44 to 22 in terms of jobs friendly. I mean, that's going to mean we're doing better. And when we're doing better, it's even more imperative to be able to reach out and help folks who uh, may not get the same opportunity or the same fair shake that others get. And. Um, you know, just because somebody's poor doesn't mean they're not a hard worker. It doesn't mean that they're not trying. Sometimes people get dealt a hand that um, is not quite as good a hand as maybe we were dealt in our lifetime. Governor, 